What is an epidemic? An epidemic occurs when an infectious disease spreads rapidly to many people within a short period of time. An epidemic may be restricted to one location. However, if it spreads to other countries or continents and affects a substantial number of people, it may be termed a pandemic. An epidemic can cause enormous damage through financial and economic losses in addition to impaired health and loss of life. So, what should we do when an epidemic occurs? The answer is to repent to Allah and humble ourselves before Him and to protect ourselves. With regard to repenting and humbling oneself before Allah, Allah says, And we have already sent messengers to nations before you, O Muhammad. Then we seized them with poverty and hardship, that perhaps they might humble themselves to us. Then why, when our punishment came to them, did they not humble themselves? But their hearts became hardened, and the devil made attractive to them that which they were doing. Calamities only come down because of sins and cannot be removed except by repentance. God says, and saying, Seek forgiveness of your Lord and repent to him, and he will let you enjoy a good provision for a specified term, and give every door of fever his fever. Allah tells us that by virtue of glorifying him, Tasbih, he saved Yunus, peace be upon him, from distress, and stated that, in like manner, he will save the believers. He says, and mentioned the man of the fish, when he went off in anger and thought that we would not decree anything upon him, and he called out within the darkness, there is no deity except you, exalted are you, indeed I have been of the wrong doors. So we responded to him and saved him from the distress, and thus do we save the believers. It is prescribed to ask for well-being in the mornings and evenings, and it is emphasized more when an epidemic is spreading. Abdullah ibn Umar said, The Messenger of Allah وسلم, never failed to say these supplications when evening came and when morning came. O oh Allah, I ask you for well-being in this world and in the hereafter. O oh Allah, I ask you for forgiveness and well-being in my religious and worldly affairs and my family and my wealth. O oh Allah, conceal my faults and keep me safe from the things that I fear. O oh Allah, protect me from in front and from behind, and on my right and on my left, and from above. And I seek refuge in your greatness from receiving unexpected harm from beneath me. It was narrated from Anas that the Prophet ﷺ used to say, I seek refuge with you from vitiligo, from insanity, from leprosy, and from bad diseases. Uthman ibn Affan reported, I heard the Messenger of Allah وسلم, say, Whoever says, In the name of Allah, with whose name nothing can harm on earth or in heaven, and he is the all hearing, all known, three times, will not be stricken with a sudden affliction until morning comes. And whoever says that when morning comes will not be stricken with a sudden affliction until evening comes. With regard to taking measures such as quarantine and seeking medical treatment, 
This is indicated by the teachings and practice of our Prophet. It was narrated from Abdurrahman ibn Auf that Allah's Apostle said, If you hear that the plague is in a land, do not go there. And if it breaks out in a land where you are, do not leave flame from it. The Prophet وسلم, said, Seek medical treatment, for Allah has not created any disease, but He has also created a remedy for it, except for one disease, old age. And the Prophet وسلم, said, Whoever eats seven Ajwa dates in the morning will not be harmed by any poison or witchcraft that day. It was narrated from Abi Hurairah that the Prophet وسلم, said, No sit camel should be put with a healthy one. The Blake of Amwas It afflicted Islamic Syria in the years from 638 to 639. It killed about 25,000 Muslim troops. During the time of Caliph Omar ibn al-Khattab, Muslim armies were engaged in the series of military campaigns in the Levant against Byzantine troops. Soon after the conquest of Syria in the years from 634 to 637, something unpredictable happened when the plague broke out in the village of Amwes, about 20 miles southeast of Jerusalem. This event is famous for debate between Caliph Omar and the Muslim commanders who refused Omar's advice to withdraw to al Madina and the outcome of the pandemic that killed between 25,000 to 30,000 people, including companions of the Prophet Muhammad. The plague spread to Syria, Iraq, and Egypt, and it was preceded by a severe famine in the southern Levant. Upon receiving news that the plague broke out in Syria, Caliph Omar ibn Khattab left al Madina to personally monitor what measures were taken to isolate the pandemic. Leaders of the Shem arrived in Sarh to greet Caliph Omar, and among them was Abu Abayd ibn al Jarrah, the commander of armies that captured Damascus and Jerusalem. During the meeting, the situation in Syria was discussed, and one group supported the return to al Madina, while others insisted on continuing the campaign despite the plague. After Caliph Omar decided to withdraw to al Madina, Abu Ubaidah and his supporters returned to Syria. Abu Ubaidah perched in the plague, and very soon after him, Mu'adh ibn Jabal faced the same fate. The plague of Amwas depleted Muslim ranks in Syria, but also showed what steps should be taken in the times of pandemics. Pandemic is like fire, and you are its fuel. Disperse so that the fire does not find anything to light it, and thus it gets extinguished. The important element of every pandemic is the human-to-human -human contact, which should be minimized or completely eliminated during the outbreak. The principle of life protection in Islam refers to protecting the public and personal health. Islamic law stipulated saving lives and souls from perdition and made saving the soul a right for everyone by preventing sicknesses before they happen and by treatment after they happen. The goal of physical distancing is to slow the spread of the virus. If people stay home and avoid contact with each other, the virus will not spread quickly. 
Fewer people will be infected at one time. People will still get sick, but it will happen at a slower rate. This will help doctors and hospitals care for patients. Therefore, Islam rejects the so-called immunity of the herd, which calls for abandoning the spread of disease first, and by which those who deserve to perish from the elderly and those who have multiple diseases will perish. This means laziness and failure to treat patients, which is refused in Islam. What about economy during the epidemic? Generally, it's wrong to depend on import from abroad, especially food and means of self-protection in times of crises. The important lesson countries should learn from the epidemic is to increase interest in the agricultural sector and seek to develop the food industries in it, because every country in the crisis seeks the interests and needs of its people first. Countries must monitor prices in order to prevent monopoly and set appropriate prices, because manipulating them is forbidden by Islamic law. Also appropriate economic plans must be put in place for this situation to secure all goods needed. Countries should strengthen, expand and deepen solidarity within them. Who is it that will lend to Allah a good loan, which Allah will multiply many times over for them, and they will have an honorable reward? It was narrated from Abi Musa that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, The relationship of the believer with another believer is like the bricks of a building. It strengthens the other. He illustrated this by interlacing the fingers of both his hands. In conclusion, we should be patient for this trial. Applying the precautionary measures for a long time is difficult. So the reward for patience with it is so great. Aisha reported, I asked Allah's Messenger وسلم, about the plague and he said, that was a means of punishment which Allah used to send upon whom he wished. But he made it a source of mercy for the believers. Anyone who is residing in a town in which this disease is present and remains there and does not leave that town but has patience and hopes for Allah's reward and knows that nothing will befall him except what Allah has written for him then he will get such a reward as that of a martyr. If you liked this video, please press like, share and subscribe to get new videos. And as usual, thanks for watching. And I wish everyone good health now and in the future.